And look at the last eight starts, 8-0, 2.57, 58 strikeouts in 49 innings, 18 walks. And you are? That, that's why I laugh when people talk about, well, who's going to start? Who's going to be the starter? This guy could be the number one starter. You know, David Cohn was talking about it during the game yesterday, and he brought up a good point. He says, that's my number one starter. He said, as much respect as I have for Tanaka, I want him to start yeah, either game four or game five as well as game one. I don't know if the Yankees are going to win uh, use four starters. If they do, then you have him at game five. And the only thing that I brought up on the postgame show with David, I agree, this guy is now pitching as one of the best pitchers in baseball. How's he going to be in October? We don't know how he's going to be. We know how Tanaka is. Thank you. That's the thing. Do you, do you want to rely on a guy to be your number one starter who's never pitched in the postseason before? That, 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 that's but you do want a guy who has swing and miss no, stuff. No, no, absolutely. But there's a couple of things at play here. All right? He's had 138 and two-thirds innings. That's the second most of his career. He had yep. 160 innings last year. So how many starts do you think he'll have left? Three? Uh, let's see. They have about... 17 or 18 games, you have three starts. All right, so three starts, say he goes six, that's another 18 innings. So he's still going to be well below the 160 for this season. But as you get into the playoffs, Michael, he might be in that rarefied air of not only pitching in the postseason for the first time, but also pitching the most innings he's ever pitched in his career. And that doesn't scare me off of him being in the rotation in the playoffs. It might scare me off of him being my stopper, my go-to guy, my number one. I still think that's reserved for Tanaka. But, hey, if he wins his next three starts, and you're talking about a pitcher that's won 11, 11 straight starts going in, then I don't know how you don't do it, but that, that, would my, that would be my only thing. Do you want this guy deep in the playoffs, pitching the most innings he's ever pitched before, biggest games of his life? At least Tanaka's kind of been there before, right? But what Tanaka's been there before, but Tanaka's given up a lot of home runs this year. And he's a different pitcher than he used to. But I, I know he won't be scared. And that's the important thing. But here's the thing with Paxton that should maybe allay some of your fears. Dominated the Dodgers in L.A. Dodgers are a really good offensive team. Dominated the uh, Oakland Athletics. Good offensive team. Shut down the Red Sox. Really good I offensive know. team. So I'm not saying those are playoff starts. Oh. But the, the, the closest to a playoff start, I believe, was the game in L.A. against the Dodgers. There was a buzz there. There was an importance to that series. They just lost three in a row to the Oakland A's. So he stepped up big in that game. His stuff is filthy now. He's throwing 97 miles an hour. He's incorporating that knuckle curve, which keeps everybody off balance. Mm -hmm. Aaron Judge said yesterday he's the best pitcher in baseball right now. Now, of course, he's a little biased, but you've got to ride that pony. He has been unbelievable. Again, you don't make that decision on September 10th, but at this point, if you had to make hey. the decision, here's how I would go, and this will shock you too. It would be Paxton, it would be Tanaka, and then I would give Jay Happ a start and then have the fourth game be a combination of Severino and Herman. Jay Happ has started to turn it around as well. Oh, I, yes. I, 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 I mean, and if you I, thought about it three weeks ago, Jay Happ would even been, might not even made the roster. Right, you're probably right. But remember, remember, Jay Happ was kind of Paxton last year. They made the trade for him, and he was 7-0. and Right. And then went to the playoffs, and then against the team that he owned throughout yeah. his career, got beat up. Yeah. So... Sometimes you don't know, Michael. I agree with you. The atmosphere in L.A. was amazing. I, I was on vacation, but I watched that game. You were back. I was excited to to be able to get you back and call in that series. And and the building was packed. And there was there was an atmosphere of the two best teams of baseball playing each other. It's not it's not really a playoff game. No, you know, there's nothing really on the line. That was all a measuring stick kind of thing because it was the two best teams going at each other. The Yankees could have gotten swept in that series. It wouldn't have mattered. They got swept by Oakland the series before. It didn't matter. I mean, the Yankees know they're winning the division. I know they want to battle for the best record overall. But it's hard to say the atmosphere in L.A. in game whatever it was in late August is the same as pitching in October at Yankee Stadium in a situation where you lose the game, your season might be over. Of course a little bit it's of a different situation. It's, it's not the same, but it's as close as, as you can approximate to. I mean, it was a full house in L.A. The Dodgers were considered, you know, if not the best team in baseball, right up there with the Yankees. And the Yankees had just lost three in a row to yeah. Oakland Athletics. So it was a big game. You're right. It's not a playoff game. It's a different animal at Yankee Stadium. Yep. But I think stuff will eventually win out.